Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin, and I'm incredibly sunburned from a dawn till dusk expedition to catch muskie. I didn't catch one, never even saw one. I'm told other people have encountered them in the past, but I remain skeptical of muskalunge existence. The name muskie or muskalunge comes from the Ojibwe word mashkanoos, meaning ugly or deformed pike fish snake. Instead of brooding over the fact that I can't find verified animals, let alone unverified animals, I'll share my thoughts on a very new field of inquiry in between applications of aloe vera. If you are familiar with my channel and my perspectives, you know that I'm nothing if not scientific, rational, and not given to the supernatural. And two, I put a lot of credence into the accounts and cultural consistencies of First Nation people. This is almost problematic for me because, as you can easily research, many of the First Nations people have lore of an animal that is not only flesh and blood, but a creature in command of psychic ability and otherworldly prowess. So how do I compromise science and supernatural, when it seems that Bigfoot is in the realm of supernatural, which contradicts that which can be scientifically agreed upon? The supernatural ideology surrounding Bigfoot intensifies the probability of Bigfoot being a real animal. If we understood these things, we would have found one by now. So I agree. Bigfoot certainly has an arsenal of extraordinary abilities that I would easily categorize as supernatural. And that's because supernatural is defined as something that is incapable of being explained by science or the laws of nature. And I would add to the end of that, yet. One such field that science has only begun to investigate and explain is that of bioacoustics. Bioacoustics is the study of sounds made by organisms and how other organisms react to those sounds. Relevant to what I'm talking about is the phenomena known as infrasound. Sound is essentially vibration, just like a stone's ripple on a lake. Sound waves, once funneled into our outer ear and contacting our eardrum, translate into nerve impulse, which our brain then perceives as sound. And these waves have physical size, which we define as hertz. Humans can only hear sound waves that measure from an inch in length, from peak to peak, to sound waves that measure about a yard peak to peak. Infrasound is any vibration that measures 10 yards peak to peak, to a mile in length. And as a note, this is a matter of frequency and pitch, not necessarily volume. Humans cannot hear infrasound, or wavelengths greater than 10 yards. Ever hear stories about how dogs or birds will inexplicably flee an area just before a tsunami or earthquake? That's infrasound. The clash of low and high pressure systems, as well as the unsteady shift of tectonic plates, create massive sound waves that we cannot hear or produce, but other animals can. Though humans cannot produce or hear sound waves that are over a yard long, other animals can. Elephants, whales, tigers, rhinoceros, okapi, hippopotamus, and crocodile have all been documented using infrasound to communicate with one another. I should note, bioacoustics is most definitely in its infancy, so this list is certainly incomplete. Infrasound is very difficult to process and test, and requires a very expensive amount of equipment. Although these animals can create infrasound, many more are certainly able to hear it, though humans cannot. These animals use infrasound to communicate in environments where sound, as the human ear understands it, is pretty useless. Okapi live in some of the deepest jungle we know of. The foliage absorbs normal sound, but infrasound, due to its enormous wavelength, can permeate the densest forest, the murkiest water, and the most expansive of grasslands. Infrasound may have originated as a communication system between animals, but some animals have clearly come up with an alternative use for it. According to Elizabeth von Muggenthaler, the president of acoustics at the Fauna Communications Research Institute, tigers are able to stun, disorient, and even paralyze their prey before the prey is even aware that a tiger is in the area. They do this via infrasound. The correlation between infrasound use and big cats answered some questions of those brave people who work with big cats. Tiger handlers and researchers have noted inexplicable episodes of fear, dread, nausea, vomiting, and even temporary or partial paralysis. And it is very important to understand that though humans do not hear infrasound in the form of noise, it still enters our inner ear, causes a regular nerve impulse, the effects of which we have only begun to understand. This phenomena has been supported and detailed by the American Institute of Physics. Two scientists named Richard Lord and Richard Wiseman conducted a study to test infrasound and its effect on humans. During a concert at a concert hall, they created infrasound at various levels, using the largest speakers available, as well as a total of 23 feet of copper pipe. They randomly played various levels of infrasound during the concert. Remember, we detect infrasound, we don't hear it. 
Weissman and Lord confessed that their device for producing and for sound was imperfect. Yet when the unwitting concertgoers were interviewed about their experience, over 20% of the concertgoers reported that they had completely inexplicable feelings of uneasiness or sorrow. Some people kept getting chills down the spine, or nervous feelings. Some concertgoers even reported extreme revulsion and fear. Dr. Weissman concluded his findings by saying that low-frequency sounds can cause people to have unusual experiences, even though they cannot consciously detect infrasound. There is an episode of Survivor Man where Stroud says that he can deal with bear and wolves, but there is something about big cats and being in big cat territory that strikes a particularly visceral fear like no other. Well, he may have been more right than he knew. He very well may have been being stalked by a big cat who was bombarding him with infrasonic waves that he couldn't hear, but his brain interpreted as confusion, paranoia, discomfort, and even dread. And any other number of symptoms, which we know very little about because so little research has been done. The possibilities are endless. And make no mistake, this is a weapon. Tigers know it. Whales know it. And even the military agrees that infrasound is a very powerful tool, a tool which applications were only beginning to understand. As far as I can tell, no research has been conducted involving infrasound in primates, but gorilla, as well as any potentially other large primates, fit the size, intelligence, and environmental requirements to be able to produce infrasound. And if a tiger can determine what tone it has to produce to stun an antelope, or knock a baboon out of a tree, or disorient a hunter, then I would argue that a higher primate, like Sasquatch, can take it ten steps further. They perhaps know what tones can elicit confusion, what tone can make fear, and probably a whole lot more. Tigers are mostly instinctual. Stalking, climbing, and producing sound comes natural to them. Bigfoot, on the other hand, are on a much higher level of intelligence than cats. This kind of power in the hands of something so close to humanity is nothing short of the kind of thing you would see in fiction. I believe that Bigfoot has many ways to interact with intruders, and the very last mode of interaction is showing themselves, because that's safest. And that is only done after all the other modes have failed, which they probably don't. An elephant's infrasound is strong up to about 10 kilometers, doubled at night. Depending on how strong Bigfoot larynx are, and how many Bigfoot are engaging in this audio warfare, and how strategic their location is, I imagine they have a similar range. Bigfoot still remains a mystery to this day, because Bigfoot is a field of study that comprises many fields of study that are all in stages of infancy. Primatology, hominology, bioacoustics, paleoanthropology, all are very new fields that we know surprisingly little about, and have only been studied in the past 25 or 50 years. Infrasound being used as weapons by tigers has long been suspected, but only verified about 15 years ago. We understand so little about our own brains, let alone their brains. And honestly, the implications of Bigfoot and infrasound are quite startling. I mean, imagine if you could use it. If Bigfoot are able to wield infrasound, which I believe they must, then we are talking about an animal that can cause confusion, dread, nausea, and who knows what else. If Sasquatch are as smart as the known higher primates, and I believe that they are much smarter, then like the known primates, they practice, they teach, they learn, they figure things out, they take pride in victories and learn from losses, give this creature something that is essentially a superpower, and the possibilities are endless. Why do you think Patterson and Gimlin's horses bucked their riders before the creature was even visible? Why were the hands on the cameraman trembling so much that a rock was required for stabilization? Infrasound would give Bigfoot the ability to deter humans from the safety and comfort of the high ground, an animal with similar intelligence as humans, only whose mind is unencumbered with stored knowledge of technology, basic or otherwise. And have you ever noticed how many alleged recordings of Bigfoot calls sound suspiciously like coyote, wolf, bobcat, or owl? Well, this is likely because the alleged Bigfoot recordings are made from a coyote, wolf, bobcat, or owl. If Bigfoot are capable of emitting infrasound, which I suspect they must be, then they would surely use it, knowing well that humans cannot hear it, but are still affected by it. Infrasound permeates a greater distance than the sound that humans can detect, 
and an added bonus is that it is silent to humans, like a dog whistle. So in regards to the Native American tribes that endow Bigfoot with supernatural prowess, they are more or less right. They probably do have powers which we know little to nothing about, but I don't think Bigfoot are paranormal. But technically speaking, I do think they are supernatural. Because we can't explain it all. Just yet. And I'm trying my damnedest to do just that. And I know this whole theory is a bit out of the box, but guess what? That's how you have to think when you're trying to explain that which is currently unexplained. Do you think infrasound is plausibly used and perfected by Bigfoot? I sure do. It answers a lot of questions. But let me know what you think, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, thanks an awful lot for listening.